Inkjet Printing Masterclass, Lesson 5, Colour Inkjet Printing. Now this we've got to Part 6, which is Basic Colour Printing Techniques. Uh, keep it simple. Yes, I really mean this. Let me give you an easy to remember checklist. Uh, number one, regularly clean your printer. Uh, make sure it's serviced regularly and you can do this yourself. Um, on our website you can see uh, very good self-help cleaning and maintenance videos. Um, you go to um, our uh, home page, you go on the left hand side of the home page, you can see a little button called printer maintenance uh, and there you'll see the key to going through all the various uh, 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 cleaning uh, and maintenance schedules for desktop uh, uh, desktop printers. For specific printers, if you refer back to our lesson one uh, in this series, we actually deal with uh, a wide range of uh, uh, desktop printers, but also we deal with a range of uh, wide format printers as well, telling you where you can get involved and when it's best not to get involved. Uh, number two, Check for consistent ink flows and make sure you achieve a perfect nozzle check at all times. Number three, make sure that every paper you use uh, in your production stock has a recent custom printer profile. And our definition of that is within six months. You've, you've checked everything and you, everything is, is that your neutrals are good, your flesh tones are good, or your colours are looking good. Now, the way to do this is to check your colour print accuracy against your supplier's master control print. Now, I would say that you should do this at least once a month. If you're a production print worker, you should have a standard image against which you're checking your, your colour accuracy, uh, and I would do it once a month. If you don't have an accurate control print, get one now. Uh, we provide all our customers with a free certified accurate colour control print and a JPEG image file that goes with it. It's the identical image so that you can, uh, you, you can print out that image on your own setup and you can compare it as a side-by-side uh, a, a -side comparison. Now all you've got to do is email us with your full postal address and we'll send it to you immediately. So get yourself a sample uh, print uh, and you can compare. Uh, uh, Abigail, could you pass me that little, that little print please? That's it, so that's, we've, got a, we've got a sample here. So we've got, uh, we've got, the, we've got the, the control print and we've got our own print that we've compared side by side. We've got some very critical areas here. We're checking for our black. We're checking for a good white, we're checking for our neutral, and we're also checking for our accurate pale flesh tone. Once we get all of these areas right, we then check for the primary colours, making sure we've got a perfect smooth graduation, and then once all this is correct, the rest of the images tend to fall into place. So we're looking at the, at the, at the difficult parts first, and then we go from there. Lovely. Thanks, Abigail. Now, we should calibrate our computer monitor uh, every month and fine-tune it to agree to the custom profile print. So we produce the custom profile print that we're happy with, which I've just shown you. You have that image up on screen and you adjust your monitor to agree to the print. And I would say that you would, again, you would check that agreement at least on a monthly basis. Uh, at the first sign of bad printing uh, that you can't fix, uh, my advice is to call your supplier immediately. They, nine times out of ten, they would have the solution for you just like that. Because you've got to remember, they're dealing with hundreds, possibly thousands of customers every month and they've seen your particular problem before. So the best thing to do, if you can't immediately fix your particular problem, give them a ring. They can very quickly get you back on the straight and narrow.
Now these basic points should allow you to colour print to a good average standard, uh, adjusting your images from what you see on screen. Be careful not to place too much trust in what you see on your monitor and remember the vital critical areas of any colour print. We're looking, uh, as I mentioned a little earlier, we're looking for a good rich black. We're making sure that you can print fully saturated primary colours. We're looking for a good rich black. Uh, uh, and your primary colours also, we want them all to be able to lift off early and smoothly graduate up to the colour of hopefully the white of your inkjet paper. Now inkjet paper I think ought to be white if it's a production paper because that's where the whites of our image come from. If you're dealing with fine art paper that carries a creamy base or a particular tone that's fine but in my opinion a good production inkjet photographic paper ought to be a good crisp white. If your paper is not a crisp white and it's a production paper that you're using all day long, I think it's time for you to look again and perhaps uh, evaluate uh, an, a, another supplier's, uh, an, another supplier's uh, inkjet paper. Number four, check your ability to render an accurate pale flesh tone. This is without doubt the hardest colour to get right and stay right. If your printing varies in colour tone, you will usually spot it first in your flushed or insipid pale flesh tones. A great tip with flesh tones, unless you absolutely positively know the correct flesh tone in a shot, for instance at a wedding, the guests pictured may have just come off the dance floor and their faces may have been flushed from dancing or equally as likely could have been standing around in the cold for ages showing early signs of hypothermia. If in doubt and your flesh tones don't look right in the prints, simply reduce your overall colour saturation by a small amount. Uh, you do that in, uh, in Photoshop, you do it in uh, image, adjust and uh, you, you adjust your, your, uh, your saturation uh, in, in that way. So uh, you, you, you re reduce your overall colour saturation by a small amount, a tiny little bit. And again, it might be so subtle you don't pick it up on screen. You then print it out again and then you look at it and you judge your flesh tone and you can repeat this until your flesh tones look okay to your judgment. You may be pulling the colour out of the rest of the image, but actually that's not so critical as the flesh tone itself. So if you're in a dilemma about flesh tones, a lot of old print workers, they've got this trick up their sleeve where they just pull back the overall colour saturation until the flesh tones look right. If the rest of the image looks a little bit less than saturated, it's not the end of the world. But if you get your flesh tones wrong, it obviously looks like a bad shot. Now, uh, 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 once you've got your flesh tones right, uh, incidentally, don't trust your monitor uh, to show you the correct subtle flesh tone. It's all too subtle. The only thing you can trust is what comes out of that printer. Uh, now I'll comment more on this important aspect later. Uh, this trick gets more print workers out of trouble than almost any other uh, shortcut I can think of. Uh, number five, make uh, uh, modern pigment inks uh, are capable of incredibly accurate neutrals. If your pigments, if your pigment prints show genuinely neutral data printed as a slight tint while your nozzle check is perfect, get yourself reprofiled. Your pigment ink neutrals should be so accurate that you can print a very acceptable black and white just by hitting desaturate in Photoshop. Uh, Abigail, can you show me that print again, please? You notice here we've, uh, we've actually uh, 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 produced a, a color print and in amongst the color print, we've got good neutrals. Now with these good neutrals, it means to say that we've got at our disposal a good black and white. 
even if we if we start him with a color image. Now we'll go into black and white printing in incredible detail on our next and final presentation. But for the time being, it's good to know that you can produce great neutrals in amongst uh, a coloured print. Lovely, thank you. Uh, finally, take time out to look at your finished print properly. Don't just glance at it. Uh, I, I've seen so many times where you 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 look at a, a final print, you'll take a quick look, and off it goes, and you go on to the next print. Do take sufficient time to look at your print in a decent quantity of good quality light. Um, I, I would say spend a, a minimum of 10 seconds looking at the various areas of the print and submit your various areas of the print to uh, 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 sensible, careful scrutiny. Now, our next area is we've got to learn to look at our print and see if there's anything basically wrong with the print. And this is our little checklist of basic errors that can occur with a particular print. Can you see any banding? Uh, can you see which way the print was actually printed? You shouldn't be able to tell if it was printed landscape or portrait. Uh, if you've got little tiny, tiny lines in there, it indicates that either your nozzle check isn't perfect or your lineup isn't correct. You, you, you have to line up your, your nozzle. You go to your, uh, 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 go to your, um, uh, 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 to, to your bi-directional lineup and the, most uh, printers have a method of being able to line up your, your print heads. So that's an issue there where we can detect a tiny little bit of a tiny little bit of banding or a tiny little bit of striping. Don't put up with it. Next thing I've seen a lot of is are your borders equal? Don't accept off-center borders. If you've got a good modern inkjet printer, your inkjet printer will give you equal borders, top, bottom, side and side. Um, one of the latest innovations we've been involved in is the is a lot of inkjet printers nowadays do a very very good job of printing borderless. Now that's fine if you can get a paper supplier to supply you with paper absolutely accurately cut to size, which we do. We're one of the only paper uh, manufacturers worldwide that will give you any photographic preferred size at no cutting charge over and above, let's say, an A4 or US letter or whatever size the paper comes out of. So you can have uh, five sevens, you can have 10 by eights, you can have 11 by 17s, you can have whatever size you're looking for and you can print to bleed. So you check your print uh, dialog box, your, 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 um, your printer driver, see which image, which actual sizes your printer uh, will allow you to print to bleed and give it a try. It's a very, very productive uh, method of producing prints. You simply have a short list of, of borderless sizes that you can do and then order from us your, your, uh, uh, your ready cut sizes and they're cut within a tenth of a mil accuracy. So they're super accurate. Now, uh, the, next, uh, the, the, the next thing to talk about is pixelation. Pixelation is always unacceptable. And it's usually because your image that came into your system did not have enough information. Now, in my language, we're talking about the number of megabytes that are given to us. Now this is a very rough guide of the minimum that I would consider uh, uh, to have as a file to, b before you actually print. So we've got a 5 by 7 I would consider you'd need around 3 megabytes to print a 5 by 7 A 10 8 I would consider you'd need about 4 megabytes. We're talking about an 8-bit RGB file, incidentally. Uh, A4 around nine megabytes. A US letter uh, size is around eight megabytes because it's a little bit smaller. An A3 around 18 megabytes and an A2 
about 36 megabytes. Now, because the software that we're dealing with uh, and the, the printer drivers are very, very efficient nowadays, you can often get away with murder with these, with these file sizes. You'd be surprised. If you're, able to, if you're able to have file sizes bigger than this, that's fine. But we've got to be a little bit aware when we, when we get given a, a file and we crop it down fairly aggressively and we, we're just left with a few megabytes and then we're expected to create a 10.8 out of it. You've got to be aware that you're starting to get into the realms of a possibility of pixelation. So remember these figures in your mind. A 5 per 7 is about 3 meg, a 10.8 is about 4 meg, and a full, a full page is around 10 meg. An A3, which is, which is so big, uh, uh, is around 18 meg. And an A2, which is a full size, is around 36 meg. So try to get that amount of original information from your, from your image if you possibly can. Uh, we say that these pixel sizes are an absolute minimum that you can get away with. When preparing your image for print, I consider the best resolutions are, well, we've got 180 pixels per inch. Now, this is absolutely the minimum size you want to get away with. That's when you're given a tiny amount of megabytes to play with. There's a lot of, uh, uh, of mobile phone, uh, smartphone images uh, um, circulating nowadays and whenever I'm given one of these images to try to reproduce at a half reasonable size I will downsize the uh, the print the 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 document size to 18 pix uh, 180 pixels per inch times whatever physical size the print is so let's say we had a tiny little file size maybe a half megabyte file and they want me to pr to print a 5 by 7 out of it I'd select 180 pixels per inch at 5 by 7 as the document size and then I'd allow the printer driver to take that 180 pixels per inch and make a reasonably good, good job of bringing it back up. If I tried to use a higher pixels per inch it would, uh, it would struggle and if I tried to use a lower pixels per inch again the calculation would be difficult. These computers that we're dealing with here, they're simply very clever calculating machines. So at the end of the day, let's give them an easy calculation. The next one up, 200 pixels per inch. Now that's a, that's a, a very popular size for do, of document size that you hand over to the printer when you're doing high speed image processing for, and for fast downloading to printers. I've got quite a few customers that have uh, uh, very very large uh, throughputs of images and they want to minimize the processing side which is the which is the speed of processing so if you've got a 200 pixel per inch image the the file sizes aren't too bad at all that's why you'd make that little bit of a compromise 240 pixels per inch I think is a good average image resolution for average quality production uh, printing 300 pixels per inch is as you probably know, is the most popular image resolution for good quality uh, colour inkjet printing. The absolute top level would be 360 pixels per inch. Now 360 pixels per inch uh, are when you have very, very critical high-end fine art printing and you want every little last bit of detail retained. I would go with 360 pixels per inch multiplied by whatever size of, uh, of, uh, uh, of document that you have and you'd end up with considerably more file size that we see here. These estimates incidentally are based on 180 pixels per inch. So any of these other file sizes when you apply them to these preferred sizes they'd end up to be larger uh, quite easily larger file sizes. You might ask well if we're getting higher and higher quality, why can't we go crazy and have something like a thousand pixels per inch? Well, quite apart from um, causing the computer to, to freeze up because you're giving the file size much, much too, too high a file size, it also gives the computer a hard calculation to work out. 
these calculations are easy because if you probably notice there they all divide pretty well easily into 1440 or 2880 or 5760 which happen to be the preferred um, uh, dot uh, quantities being produced by the printer driver to drive the, pr the, the print heads themselves. So these are good. So the absolute top quality and this is where you want to make something out of a very small file size and you've got those preferred sizes in between. If you, if you go somewhere around here you won't go far wrong but don't give it awkward sizes in between. It either wants to be 300 or 360. Don't give it something like 333.3 recurring because that will simply create uh, excess noise in the printer driver and you might actually see it in a little bit of noise in the, uh, in the, uh, in the print itself. Now you'll be faced with smaller sizes so you, you, you need to bear that in mind. Um, the good news here is that most of the time you will get away with an acceptable print. The eyes tend to, uh, the print tends to flatter to deceive and you will find that often you can get away with considerably less uh, uh, file size than, than we've said here. Uh, the further away you get from these minimum file sizes, the greater danger of pixelation you face when printing. Now, uh, are your tonal graduations smooth? Uh, this is the, we're, we're continuing with picking out faults in a, in, in, in a print. Are your tonal graduations smooth? Well, supposing they're not. Um, if your tonal graduations aren't smooth, it's likely that you haven't set your, uh, your color space correctly. Now, uh, if you're using the correct Photoshop color space, that means to say you go into Photoshop, RGB settings, and you select the industry standard, which is Adobe RGB 1998. We cover this, incidentally, in our earlier uh, tutorial on color management. So we go into this in fair detail in lesson uh, four in our series, but we must mention it here you might have adopted sRGB, for instance, which is a, a far coarser, uh, it, 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 there are, are less increments of color for a particular, for a particular uh, a, 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 a virtual perimeter of color. So it's best to make sure that you have your, have your settings correctly. Um, now, uh, our YouTube channel, the Marat YouTube channel, has videos which show you how to set up Photoshop correctly with regard to your color space. And I could also refer you backwards to our lesson four. Uh, number f uh, 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 item F, are your prints slightly, uh, almost imperceptibly banded? Check that you set your print quality settings to maximum and that you have not ticked high speed. Uh, I often encounter customers who are not aware of the printer resolution that they're using. An absolute minimum for a good standard of photographic printing is 1440 dots per inch. Either high speed off or high speed on with caution uh, which means bi-directional printing, applying ink left and right, uh, from left to right, and also on the return stroke from right to left. It's a faster mode, but it's arguably slightly less quality, which you may be able to detect in your print. The answer here is to do a printing trial. Print out your favorite critical image which includes a, a smooth, subtle graduations, a good rich black, a flesh tone. Now print each version at different print quality settings on your machine. So for instance, 1440 high speed, 1440 high speed off, uh, uh, 2880 high speed on, high speed off. Check what I say about high speed. Uh, and, and if you have it, 5760 high speed on, high speed off. 
um, build up a picture of your own printer's print quality versus speed equation. The higher the quality, the, 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 the slower the print performance. So you, want, you don't want to spend ages waiting for a print, but you don't want to have prints dashing off the printer at, at some incredible speed, but you know they're not of professional photographic quality. So you will pretty quickly uh, 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 detect uh, what's right for yourself. I err on the side of printing slowly and making sure the print buffer's got plenty of work uh, feeding in and I can go off and have a coffee or something like that and come back and feed yet more work into the print buffer. That's what I particularly like to do. Now, you can have, uh, uh, you, you can have a, 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 a moderate print setting on something like a standard quality uh, production job, but a super critical portrait uh, on fine art paper, for instance, you know, you'd always go to that absolute top setting. Incidentally, remember to make sure your custom profiles are set for your correct uh, print speed. So if you've got a very uh, a high end print speed, like absolute best photo, make sure your custom profile is, has been created for that print speed. If you've got a faster print speed, get a custom profile, again, in addition, for that faster print speed. Because, you know, there's all sorts of variables that come in here, and if we're trying to get things absolutely accurate, we want to get the print speed and the custom profile uh, correctly linked together. Now here we go. Are your prints just not good? Have you over photoshopped? Now you find this out by printing out the original image of your, of your work before you got to grips with Photoshop on it, before you did any edit ed editing. Uh, often you'll find that the image is cleaner and purer than when you started working with Photoshop or Lightroom or, or any of the other editing software, simply because you may have been over adjusting in Photoshop guided by what you see on screen. Your underperforming monitor may be encouraging you to over adjust and you're starting to, dis instead of enhancing your image or perfecting your image, you may be actually uh, destroying your image or roughening your image up. So you need to be aware of this extremely common problem. Uh, H, is your printer not doing as it's told? Is there a particular function on your printer that just won't work and it's driving you mad? For instance, uh, roll paper printing uh, on a desktop printer. Now we sell a lot of 13 inch uh, paper in gloss and satin and in a very good quality uh, glossy uh, canvas that we do. And it's very, very convenient to be able to produce prints from a 13 inch roll because you can create your own favorite uh, uh, formats, your own favorite aspect ratios uh, for your clients. It's very, it's very nice to be able to do that and it's economical. Now, uh, if your printer won't uh, work with uh, roll paper and it's supposed to, don't put up with it. Get back to your inkjet printer supplier, talk to their technical support, find out why it's not behaving. Often it's something as simple as you haven't updated your printer driver or you haven't used a particular set of functions correctly. Once it works, the satisfaction is fantastic. So if there's some aspect that your printer doesn't do but should do, make it work. Don't put up with any excuses. Um, now, you can read the manual, you can change your printer driver, you can update your software. Allow yourself to be guided by your printer, manufacturer, technical support. We can help to a certain extent and we're happy to do so. Um, we've got quite a reputation in the industry. We'll help you no matter what ink or paper you're using. So if you've got a problem and you're not necessarily using Marit ink, you're not necessarily using Marit paper, we're still happy to help because if we all, if we all helping around the industry, it all adds to the sum of knowledge. We've, we've always been that way. 
Now, you, you, you've paid for these features on your, on your printer. You need to demand them. Uh, I actually witnessed an example of this at an exhibition about a year or two ago where one of our customers uh, confronted a knowledgeable technical guy uh, on a printer manufacturer stand wanting to know why he couldn't accurately set his paper sizes on his brand new wide format printer. He got the reply that the problem was known and that the solution at the moment was to run your printer from a PC, not a Mac. Now it wasn't an ideal solution, but at least he left the show with a temporary solution that he could work with. And it was later solved by a printer driver update. The technical guy on the stand was very good. He took an, a note of the customer's name and he said, I'm very sorry, this is all we have at the moment, but we will tell you as soon as we fixed it. And of course, sure enough, true to his word, he did contact the customer once the update patch was available and the printer was then able to run not just from a PC, but from his favorite Mac uh, equipment. So if you don't ask, you won't get. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll find the major printer manufacturers extremely helpful. They want to help, they want to get you to to where you want to be. Uh, and the last, the, the, the last uh, 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 issue here, um, finally, if there's a printer problem that's not covered in this list we've talked about above, and it, and it can be quite likely, now whether you use our inks and papers or not, you can contact either marit.com or maritusa.com uh, we've got a good record of helping all print workers and have good relations with our fellow photographic industry suppliers uh, and manufacturers. If we don't know of the solution, we usually know who you should be talking to. I think the, I think the most important thing here is you should never struggle on your own.